welcome to the BSC Tap Room again. All right. Um, oh, I started it. Right. Uh, hello, welcome everyone. Uh, when I switched from Linux to Linux, then Linux to FreeBSD for a uh, studio, I tried to gather as much info about, uh, well, whatever is needed to, uh, for a FreeBSD studio, uh, a music production studio, in one blog post called Sing Beast to Sing. Uh, it was, I was using FreeBSD for a year, and at that time I didn't know that the BSD is actually a BSD logo, not a f uh, mascot, not a FreeBSD, so, it doesn't work, this doesn't work on all BSDs, only, I tested it only on FreeBSD, and uh, I thought no one is interested in a studio based on BSD, uh, but if you look at uh, Twitter statistics, uh, that's probably the most important thing I ever done in my life, uh, and uh, then it kicked off, and uh, it, it's a pretty amazing studio. But let's start with uh, who I am as uh, I'm pretty new in the uh, FreeBSD community. Uh, my name is Goran Mekic. Uh, by now, I think everyone calls me Meka. And uh, I come from a hackerspace in Novi Sad, Serbia called Tilda Center. I was lucky enough to have a support uh, from my beloved wife to, to actually do it, so we are co-founders. And um, uh, I come from, uh, my education is uh, electronic engineer high school, I think that's the proper translation of our education system. And I studied something vaguely called business IT at a university. Uh, which actually translates to 80% math and the rest. Uh, I'm a band member, which means I play a guitar, uh, which is the hardest instrument to record in a band, in a rock and roll band. Uh, uh, I used to sing, but I hope I won't do it anymore because we have a guy who is actually trained in singing and does that way better than I do. Uh, I'm into, <laughs> if you ask any person, uh, they are listening to all kinds of music, but if we narrow it down, uh, for me it's uh, metal on uh, uh, guitar. Uh, guitar music is usually uh, metal, if you ask me. and. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, there's this electronic music uh, type called Gore Trends. So I'm not going to go into, they say there are like 70 types of metal, but if you actually want to simplify stuff like I do, there are three types of metal. First one, Tsun Tsun, Chun Chun, and Jun Jun. And playing the Junjun style, and in electronic music, there is uh, Uts Uts and Piu Piu. Uh, <laughs> I'm interested in the uh, chicken, so of course, the Piu Piu style. Uh, so, but uh, more elaborately, I like complex melodies and arrangements, so uh, I needed something that is robust and works. So, from, uh, let me show you a typical layout, or my layout in a studio. Uh, and this is it. This is everything FreeBSD or any operating system sees. It's, uh, ideally it's a USB uh, digital mixer, so everything is uh, in one place. The routing, the mixing, the effects, and whatnot which you can control via computer. I'm not going to say FreeBSD because we still lack a bit of a support for, for uh, devices, not audio-wise, but control-wise. And uh, 
you probably need to, to hear what you're doing. So there are some speakers. There are some instruments that are um, recorded or sent through the USB so they can be recorded uh, clean without any effects or, or whatever. There's a uh, effects unit. Uh, well, this is my favorite. Uh, so what does the mixer as a hardware does? Uh, it splits. One sound goes to, to the effects and one goes to, to the USB for the recording. Then when the sound re uh, comes back, uh, it's split again. So one goes to USB and one goes to, to the speakers. So it's a monitoring system. If you're playing or singing something, you can hear yourself. Uh, for the pew pew part, uh, there is a synth. And it goes straight to the effects processor. So it's uh, from a mixer perspective, this is all one device. And uh, <clears throat> there's a floor pedal board, so you can uh, switch different uh, presets on an effects board, uh, on an uh, effects rack. And uh, uh, what I usually do is use uh, three sounds. It's clean, it's a jinjin, and it's pew pew. Uh, so in reality, this is how it looks. This, together with the uh, keyboard, is a uh, synth. The glowing yellow stuff is a uh, uh, processor, a fax processor. Uh, on top, there is a mixer, although it doesn't look like that. It's the mixer that is on the top of a pile there uh, below the tripod. Luckily, we didn't need it this year for the, for this uh, dev room. So after the talk, you can ping me, and I can show you how it works, and we can fiddle with it. And uh, uh, I don't know if you can see this, but this is a pedal board, and something glowing here is a desktop. Uh, this is actually a 10-year-old computer. So I have i5 with 8 gigs of RAM. And uh, it used to run with a hard drive. Now it's SSD. So it's a really, really low-end computer these days. Uh, and it's, it's possible to, to, to use a low-end thanks to, to FreeBSD being optimal in, uh, in this way. So software uh, that I use or am I uh, used, I started with FreeBSD. And it started all working after a lot of fiddling. Because there are not many people you can actually ask uh, how to run a music production studio. Uh, Later on, I decided, OK, how about we go in totally uncharted territory? Nobody is using hardened BSD for a music studio. Let's give it a try. And that's what's installed on, on my desktop right now. It works perfectly. And for the sake of this talk, when I say hardened BSD, you can think free BSD and vice versa. Uh, there is this little. Um, Audio driver on FreeBSD is called OSS. And there is this little thingy called Virtual OSS that does um, complicated things like uh, resampling, routing, uh, and whatnot. Uh, it's a user space uh, program because if you have a big number of channels, uh, user space is more efficient in, in doing that kind of operations. R5 uh, is currently the only uh, digital audio workstation available in FreeBSD that gives you the power to, to actually have a, a production studio. Uh, on Linux world, there is a I don't even know how many alternatives, but uh, right now they 
I tried ported some of them and they all have these Linuxisms and it's really hard. So maybe in the future we, we will get uh, alternatives. Uh, for, for the drumming, because I live in a building and having a drum in a building is almost impossible, although I had it for years and I don't know why I'm living yet uh, still. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> it was actually a look, uh, e drums, so it's not a full analog drum. Probably that's why they kind of let me do it for a while. Uh, there's this thing called LV2, which is uh, short for Let's Power version 2, and that's a framework and libraries for uh, uh, implementing your own. Uh, effects and uh, sound generators or porting someone else's work. And there is Jack. Unfortunately, I personally don't like it, but currently Order 5 uh, explicitly works only with Jack and FreeBSD, so we have to use it. Uh, and if you're talking about uh, music, you're actually talking about FreeBSD from, um, sorry, real time from a FreeBSD perspective. Uh, what does it actually mean? One is if you pluck a string on a guitar, you don't want to hear it in five seconds. You want to hear it right now so you have a proper feedback and you know what you're actually doing. Uh, and the second part is jitters. So if um, sample is not, <coughs> put it shortly, if it's not on the uh, sound card at the right time, uh, you're not going to get your signal right. It's going to have these little distortions called jitters. And jitters are actually, from a real-time uh, perspective, are harder to to get than uh, plucking a string, everything below, I don't know, six milliseconds, no matter how your ear is trained, you cannot hear that. Uh, but five milliseconds, if your sample is late for five milliseconds, that's a disaster. So what does it mean? A lot of CCTL. Um, first one is, uh, uh, I joined a uh, drum gizmo team and we have tests and tests shown that the free BSD is so slow that tests are failing. It, it's not possible. I mean, if you read the, the free BSD, I think it's in a handbook. The kernel actually has a concept of uh, uh, real-time priority queue for the threads. So if your uh, application is real-time, asking for real-time permissions, uh, kernel is going to give it to them, only to the root, but there are uh, ways to, to get exceptions. And uh, <coughs> what this does, I asked on a mailing list, the default is equal five. Uh, when there's an IRQ, now, I'm not a kernel developer, so I might be off. But uh, from a musical uh, point of view, uh, when there's an RQ in, uh, happening, uh, um, the FreeBSD will not react right away. And uh, because uh, FreeBSD tries to save your battery, for example, on a laptop, and uh, not reacting right away uh, gives it ability to, okay, so I have these five IRQs uh, handle them in one sweep. Not entirely true technically, but that's what's going on. Lower this to zero and every IRQ is handled right away. And the tests in uh, drum gizmos uh, magically uh, started uh, passing instead of failing. If you have a uh, USB audio, a uh, USB device, uh, you can uh, tune how many milliseconds of buffer is going to use, but only for uh, USB. 
and it goes from 2 to, I think, 64, but nobody's interested in an upper limit, only lower one. Uh, when applications open uh, sound device, uh, they can um, they can choose the buffer size of the in kernel um, in kernel buffers uh, size, and uh, it's also a buffer on the application because of the copying of the data. And uh, uh, if application doesn't know about that in FreeBSD, you can force it to uh, be as real time as possible. And that's what uh, latency equals zero does. Give me the smallest possible buffer. So if, for example, Jack doesn't know how to handle buffers in FreeBSD OSS, OK, give it the lowest one. Uh, and the last uh, one is a bit perfect. It's not strictly real time. It's uh, uh, more has to do with uh, jitters, and uh, if you know that you're not going to resample or uh, in any way transform your audio in the kernel or virtual OSS, you can set it to bit perfect equals one, and everything actually produced or written to the driver is just going to be sent to the device without taking any care of uh, well, resampling for, for start. Uh, <coughs> there are devices that actually can do hardware resampling, so uh, they can use this too. And it's important if you, currently if you have more than, I think, eight channels on your audio, the reason I don't know is because I have 18, uh, you have to use BitPerfect and virtual OSS to do, to do your audio stuff. So BitPerfect is actually needed for a virtual OSS, and this is one quarter of a command, actually. <laughs> uh, what it does. So minus S uh, says, OK, if there's a, I'm working on 44.1K uh, kilohertz, and there's something like 48K, coming in, do the resampling, and then send it to the driver. Uh, minus I8 is a real-time uh, priority. Uh, B32 means use 32 bits samples, please. Uh, minus S708 uh, is an uh, experimental value for uh, buffer. It depends on many variables, but mostly on your frequency of audio and uh, what your hardware can push. Uh, in reality, this translates to few milliseconds on a very, very old uh, computer, decade-old computer. Uh, you can say, OK, my card has a, multiple inputs and outputs, but please use only two. This is what a C minus two does. And you can tell it with uh, minus M, don't use first and second input, but use eight and nine. Why I do that is because eight and nine for me is a effects processor. So if you're, I don't know, for example, talking on uh, uh, Viber, Skype, or choose your uh, failure of VoIP, uh, you can sound like Dark Vader or, or something because you're, you're going through the effects. And as a matter of fact, a friend once asked me, uh, who is not living where, uh, in the same country as I am, OK, did you create something new on a, on a guitar? Yeah, can I hear it? Of course. And that's the way to, to tell your uh, FreeBSD uh, default inputs are the ones from a uh, fax processor. Uh, minus D DSP tells it uh, create a device DSP, slash dev slash DSP, and that's the default device in uh, FreeBSD for audio. Uh, so if you've got multiple devices or 
only one, doesn't matter. It's going to create a default one for the device you're actually using. And uh, this uh, capital M thingy, the, the, the line, is copying my first input to the 8 and 9 outputs. What it actually does is uh, when I play a guitar, I want to record it and send it straight away to the effects. And that's wh what it does. It's uh, uh, options for virtual OSS go to infinity. And it really does uh, a lot of work in a studio. Uh, but if you choose FreeBSD for your uh, studio driver, uh, you're going to learn, or whether you like it or not, you're going to learn some non-musical stuff. There's going to be a lot of GDB, unfortunately, or LLDB. Choose your, choose your preference. Uh, there are all kinds of glitches and failures uh, that can happen because the community running FreeBSD in Studio is really, really small. I think I can count six people that I met on internet since two years ago, I think. Uh, you're going to be part of that community. It's a small but a very, very fast answering community. And uh, because it's a really technical stuff, uh, they are really technical. Uh, I don't know if I should count myself in. Uh, you're going to learn system administration, meaning uh, you're going to discover a lot of uh, ways to improve uh, your real time by either uh, managing, it's always managing buffers, but it's either managing CCTL or you're going to uh, turn off some things or you're going to maybe compile your uh, custom kernel. Uh, I don't use custom kernel, so it works, uh, it works great. Uh, I don't think anyone should need it, but who knows? And uh, when I said that USB driver uh, has a tunable, CCTL tunable for a buffer, um, it actually didn't have it when I started. So I started poking around the kernel and trying to find which buffer is too big. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just lowering the numbers. And when I got the result, all oh, right, I can play now. So it's that buffer. Uh, so you're going to learn kernel developer and development at least a little bit, whether you like it or not. And you like it, right? Uh, uh, actually, I didn't do the, the CCTL for, for this uh, um, USB driver. Buffer, I ask actual developer, can we please make it a tunable? So it, it's an option. Maybe you don't know how to do development. You're just a musician. And uh, you can ask people, can we do it like this or like that? You, you might have some, some idea how it's done. Uh, I promised you a lot of GDB, but um, I'm not going to go into details of GDB. This is like 80% of GDB that I use. Why? Because if you imagine that the war in uh, audio CPP is a variable holding your sample, and you don't get a nice voice out of your PA system, but you get, I mean, you never get a little distortion. You get and you need to search why is that uh, why is that sample not right, and this is used like eighty percent of the time. Uh, you probably 
can use other techniques, but as it's audio, I didn't want to go into debugging too much. And uh, probably D-Trace would be easier to, to use, but I didn't use uh, D-Trace before. I used GDB, so I, I picked my uh, uh, known enemy instead of unknown friend. And uh, <coughs> it runs really nice, and I hope that uh, in the following month we will, we as a band, will uh, publish something on, a, uh, on the internet, so it's not going to be totally empty talk. We actually do the recording these days, and uh, it works. It works beautifully. So, there are few few things that at least I would like to be uh, implemented or done next. There is this thing called Marlon. Uh, I started this as a library. Uh, it's in C++ and I wanted to explore uh, buffer management in the audio application. I didn't know how to uh, name it, and uh, my wife suggested, how about you go to Google Translate, enter all the keywords uh, for your software, and choose different languages, see what you like. For some reason, Irish language is beautiful for naming, because if you put, a, uh, I've put a buffer, and chose all the languages, and almost in all languages, buffer is um, buffer. Audio is audio. Music, oh, oh my god. So I put buffer Irish, and it's Molan. I don't even know if that's a proper Irish pronunciation, but that's how the software is called. Uh, it's currently running only on FreeBSD. Uh, actually, it doesn't run anywhere to be honest, because it's only the library, and if you know how uh, the inner workings of the library are doing their stuff, you can program your own uh, digital audio workstation, and that's where I'm, that's direction I would like to, to take as I don't know any other effort, and I asked uh, uh, to create a specific, a specifically FreeBSD uh, audio workstation, uh, but it's implemented in such a way that if you implement uh, your, uh, for example, ALSA for Linux as a class, you have your ALSA input and output. Uh, and yeah, it's an experiment of using uh, standard library, standard C++ library structures to do audio. You can be much more uh, optimal than that, but I chose to go this way because if it works, it's less work for me. So uh, it, it works wonderfully. So wonderfully that if I have two channels with one sample of buffer on the input and output, it takes around 30% of CPU on my computer, probably around 10%, 15 on a modern computer. Uh, what I'm not satisfied with is a hardware mixers, digital hardware mixers. So in uh, Tilda Center, we are exploring uh, real-time operating systems and audio and uh, ADDA uh, chips. Uh, we want to implement our own uh, digital mixer or audio interface well, because it's going to be equipped with a USB. And what I want to do with that is uh, currently <coughs> I use uh, audio card to route my signals, which means virtual OSS does it. And if you look at the pathway, uh, 
the signals goes to the hardware, then the kernel, then well, driver, then virtual OSS, then uh, you route it and it goes back. It would be much more optimal if uh, the routing could be done in a hardware, and that's what I want to do. Uh, as Tilda Center is conceived as an educational center, and uh, um, we're really, really loud about FreeBSD. Uh, tuning an education of a FreeBSD for uh, uh, sake of audio is what we do, and uh, there are at least three persons listening to me, to my gibberish talks about hey, what if we do this or that in audio-wise? And there's a Ravenna, I think that's the pronunciation. It's AES, uh, AES standard, uh, and there's no uh, open source implementation uh, of that uh, protocol. What that protocol allows is, uh, or brings is uh, ability to use your network uh, for routing audio. So you can, for example, have multiple machines without audio card, but they all route their audio through uh, Ethernet, and one machine does the, the reproduction of the sound. That would be really wonderful if we could have in a FreeBSD, and there are some FreeBSD developers that are tackling the problem slowly, and we hope, uh, I mean, they hope that it's gonna be implemented soonish. I mean, with, uh, um, with the drivers, it's never fast, so soonish. Uh, there are few people uh, and uh, teams I would like to, to thank. Uh, first one is Hans Peter Selaski. Uh, he implemented USB stack for FreeBSD, USB audio drivers, virtual OSS, uh, and I don't know what what other plethora of software that is needed for uh, um, FreeBSD to be a viable uh, music production alternative, and. Uh, he has even more crazy uh, studio setup than me, so he needed more real time than, than me, so great. Uh, Yuri Viktorovich is a guy who ported almost all LV2 uh, plugins. If you go to fresh ports and type LV2, it's Yuri all the way. Uh, Tommy Pernilla helped me with a presentation, uh, proofreading, and uh, some of the, well, crazy setups for, uh, for audio. Uh, Drum Gizmo team actually taught me how to do DSP real time and whatever is needed for, for audio, which 80% of the time means GDB. Uh, order team, really done you know, great stuff. Uh, it does wonderful audio uh, mixing and routing and not so wonderful MIDI, uh, but it's, it's usable. It's still uh, used in at least my studio, uh, but it can be better. Uh, and Attila Center crew for Supporting me, giving back ideas, implementing a uh, few bits and pieces, and generally not being annoyed by me uh, when I talk about this stuff. Uh, that would be all. And if you have any questions, <coughs> yes? Is set up only for recording music, or are you also using it to mix in the box, basically with plugins like, I don't know, virtual instruments or compression EQ? Uh, so the question was uh, if I use it only for uh, mixing, or there are some uh, effects uh, in the box. Um, the effects are good. 
but uh, some generators are not so good. For example, there's a, I would say a crossover called gu Guitarx, which doesn't generate the sound, but if you need a metal sound, it's going to generate a totally different sound on the output because of the distortion, and it's still not really good. For rock and maybe clean sounds, yeah, but uh, so sound generators are not perfect, effects are wonderful, and sometimes I use software, sometimes I use direct. Yes? Yes, actually, uh, the reason why I switched from uh, Linux to FreeBSD is that <coughs> I didn't switch, actually. I, I had a dual boot, and uh, uh, FreeBSD w was in a worse situation because it was on a hard drive, Linux was on SSD. Uh, there is no such thing as a real-time queue for threads in a Linux kernel or a preemptive threads. There are patches, but when I used it, uh, VirtualBox broke. So it's better for real time, but you probably have much better support in Linux for uh, uh, other audio workstations like Muse, which I would really like to have on FreeBSD. What about Firewire? I try to avoid it by all means. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, it, all, even on Linux, it's a problem, so I never tried it. There was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sir. Uh, there is one song on SoundCloud, so if you ping me on anything, I will send you a link. Uh, I wanted to put a link, but it, it's a huge. Anyone else? Be loud, now it's the audio time. <laughs> you, use, you were saying I was a little bit lost with your way of using the effects processor. You're basically sending the clean guitar signal to, your, to, the, to the box, to the input, and then you have the, uh, the effects processor as a send and return. Uh, actually, almost yes. Uh, what I do is, let's say it's a guitar. When I play, uh, it gets into the virtual OSS, which splits it in two. So one goes to the computer for a recording, because you want to record the clean sound and then re-amplify it and whatnot. And the other uh, half of the split goes to effects, because you want to hear it in real time while you're playing. Uh, but when, when things, when, when samples return from the effects processor, go to recording to the computer and to the PA. Yeah. We have a minute and a half to be allowed. Okay, uh, that would be all then. Thank you for coming. <laughs>